It's a pretty day, and you're walking down the sidewalk or perhaps sitting in a park. The sun glints off someone's hair, and you're captivated. The texture, the color, maybe even the smell. It's beautiful. But that same hair, divorced from a head, and snagged in the drain of a hotel room you just checked into? Ugh. Today's books brush up against this tangled issue. Velocate by Karen Hardy and Don't Cut Your Hair, It's Beautiful by Kelly Morgado explore how culture, context, and other factors influence whether we see this same material as gorgeous or grotesque. Karen Hardy is a visual artist based in Asheville, North Carolina. With a keen eye towards experimentation, she often combines innovative hand paper making techniques with non-traditional materials in her artist books, sculptures, and installation. Hardy's book, Velocate, is a tactile and visual encounter with specific materials. The box housing this book is crisp, but feels very dense and heavy. Using overbeaten abaca and flax fibers, Hardy handmade the paper that covers the acrylic box. She regularly uses this translucent and almost skin-like material in her work. Describing her attraction to this paper, she says, This material layers and interacts with light in compelling ways, capable of being beautifully luminous and uncomfortably grotesque at once. When I first opened the box, I thought maybe this object was some sort of handheld broom made of human hair. A definition peeks out from behind. Velocate. One, twitch or to cause to twitch. Two, touch lightly so as to excite the surface nerves and cause uneasiness, laughter, or spasmodic movements. Tickle, titillate. Using Haiti Kyle's flag book structure, Velocate is an alluring and tactile object. As I open the book, the lengths of hair flop down and lightly brush across my hands and wrists. Without the definition of velocate, I might not have been so focused on the physical sensation of the hair crossing my skin, or as aware of the slight discomfort I feel when it does. I also can't help but think of other ways that hair has been preserved and treasured, like keeping a snippet of a child or lover's hair, or Victorian hair art like morning brooches. Unlike flesh, hair can retain its form and color for many years, even centuries. Hardy arrived at Bellicate after exploring how to incorporate materials that she regularly uses into a flag book. Rather than focusing on printed text and images, she sought a specific physical experience that would engage multiple senses. She started with thin strips of handmade paper, but eventually discovered that extending hair from the pages created the compelling movement and bodily interaction she was after. Hardy's editions are often variable because her process is so rooted in investigating different possibilities. For Velocate, she experimented with different human hairs, eventually landing on six books that feature similar hair colors, textures, and lengths, with some variation in the color and tones of the paper. Turning the pages and opening and closing the book, the hair moves and invites me to stroke it back. I have a strong impulse to straighten loose hairs with my fingers, setting every strand back in its place. Velocate is an interactive and playful book, but also quite stark. It is simultaneously lovely, 
and off-putting, leading us to question that sometimes very fine line between what is beautiful and what is repulsive. Kelly Morgado is an interdisciplinary designer and artist. Beginning in 2018, she held the Redfield Fellowship at the University of Nevada's Black Rock Press. During the fellowship, Morgado mounted an exhibition of work that explored hair as a material and a concept. She created these pieces through experimental processes to achieve legible prints on human hair. She also printed text on muslin strips, like those used for removing hair from the legs and body, and then sewed pants from those strips. The work investigated personal rituals with hair, Morgado's own experiences with femininity and womanhood, as well as cultural perceptions, assumptions, and valuations of hair. After that show, Morgado expanded on these ideas in a collaborative artist's book that shares the same title of the exhibition, Don't Cut Your Hair, It's Beautiful. The chemise directly references those muslin hair removal strips, with a lavender smear mimicking the wax used to remove body hair. Inside the case are three pamphlets. When we open one, it's obvious right away that this will not be a standard codex-style reading experience. Many of the pages are scored and invite the reader to fold them down to create new juxtapositions. The images under these triangle folds are never fully open to us. They exist in pocket-like spaces that we can peek into but are deliberately hidden away. Running my fingers along these images to fold the pages down forces me to interact very intimately and somewhat uncomfortably with an anonymous person's body and hair. Each pamphlet contains text and image contributions that Morgado solicited from different artists. Moving beyond her own personal experiences, she wanted to present multiple stories and perspectives surrounding hair, so that different readers might find an entry point through an event or an idea that particularly resonated. Themes of identity, resistance, and shame overlap and connect the texts across the three pamphlets. Morgado is also interested in the fragmentation of images. By not seeing the whole image, you don't always know what the hair is or where it came from. I find it also focuses our attention and confronts our expectations around what is natural or unnaturally modified, like fake eyelashes around nipples. The three books provide another opportunity for interaction that brings some of these fragmented images together. The center spread of each book lines up with the cover of another book to create a larger image. We also see whole images in the center folds. I like this one in particular. It subverts and reclaims the antiquated male gaze of a pinup centerfold. Exaggerating nipple hair to an extreme, we are confronted with the many parts of the body, indeed most of the body, where hair naturally grows, but women are expected to remove or hide it. Morgado collaborated closely with photographer Frances Melhop for many of these photographs. She also extended the collaboration to some of the hairstylists from whom she had been sourcing hair. Morgado asked the stylists to create something with the hair, and they returned with these delicate and humorous hair pieces found throughout the books. Morgado credits all of her collaborators inside the case that wraps around the pamphlets. There is also a fold-out key to help identify the specific works from each contributor. The many voices in Don't Cut Your Hair, It's Beautiful develop a richness throughout Morgado's project. Some recall pain, others bring edgy humor, but each brings elements of strength in the face of judgment and confusion. 
Across the three pamphlets, we are confronted with ways that the hair on our heads and bodies are intimately attached to feminism, race, gender, and culture. Morgado empowers us to celebrate our personal expressions of body hair without shame or judgment, and entrusts us to extend that empowerment to others' choices as well. Whether we like it or not, we all make assumptions about the hair on people's heads and bodies. Bella Kate and Don't Cut Your Hair, It's Beautiful are intimate and interactive books that encourage us to reconsider our reactions and presumptions about hair and how it is valued.